What is happening everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, please take a moment to subscribe so you don't miss any of our adventures. Mm -hmm. We are off for the perfect tourist weekend in Los Angeles. So let's do stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm Tara, that's Lucas. We're on a quest for new adventures and great food. Come along with us as we explore our incredible world. And now let's head over to Hancock Park and our first stop. What's up y'all? We're in front of the La Brea Tar Pits. And behind us is a pool of water that has oil, which is under pressure, bubbling up out into it, creating tar. Unsurprisingly, it smells like tar. So we're gonna do a little tour of the grounds. Uh, you can see all the uh, tar pits. This is all free. And then there's also a museum that costs $15. And we're gonna go do that as well. So why don't you come along? Yep. Travel back in time with us. 40,000 years. Just off Wilshire Boulevard, in the Miracle Mile neighborhood of Los Angeles, the La Brea Tar Pits is one of the most unique national landmarks in the United States. The La Brea Tar is actually asphalt, the lowest grade of crude oil, and there are dozens of pits spread across several acres for you to explore. It may be hard to imagine due to its diminutive size, but Pit 9 trapped at least 27 Colombian mammoths. Pit 91 offers a behind-the-scenes glimpse into an active fossil dig, where paleontologists still excavate real fossils every summer. Giant ground sloths used to wander around downtown Los Angeles. Sloths are pretty much my favorite animal, so I had to get up close and personal with this guy. The Page Museum is packed full of information and life-size models of the ancient animals that roamed these grounds so far in the past. With mounted fossils towering over you, it's easy to see how different these animals were from what we see today. Take a look in the fossil lab, where scientists are still unearthing newly found fossils. More than 750,000 individual fossils have been found so far, and the scientists that work here will be working on fossils found here for many more years. Each and every one of them will be displayed here for the public to see. There's a plant-filled atrium in the center that's really peaceful and has a beautiful waterfall. On the south-facing slope of Mount Hollywood sits an Art Deco masterpiece that calls back to a more sophisticated era. 
The Griffith Observatory opened in 1935, and its views of the Los Angeles Basin, the Pacific Ocean, and the Hollywood Sign put this near the top of the list of best views in the area. The observatory, exhibit hall, planetarium, and grounds are free to visit. The Astronomer's Monument greets visitors at the front of the property. It pays homage to the six greatest astronomers of all time. Six artists contributed, one astronomer each, and George Stanley, who created the Oscar statue, was one of them. Contained in the beautiful copper domes on each side are Zeiss telescopes, open to the public and staffed by knowledgeable guides. The bronze sundial dates from 1957 and allows us to track the movement of the sun and tell time in shadow. Key scenes from the classic film Rebel Without a Cause were filmed at Griffith Observatory, and a monument to the film star, James Dean, overlooks the canyon. Embedded directly in the pavement is a map of our solar system. Much of the property was funded by the Works Progress Administration. Rounding out the outdoor exhibits is the Gottlieb Transit Corridor, which allows visitors to use the sunlight to tell us what day it is and where the sun is located in its pathway across the sky. As we enter the building, the first exhibit that visitors encounter is the Foucault's Pendulum, which was designed to demonstrate the rotation of the Earth. The observatory from here is separated into six sections, each with a different focus. Exhibits of note include an operational Tesla coil, a camera obscura, samples of the elements of the periodic table, and the big picture, the largest astronomical image in the world, and scale models of the solar system as well. Explore further for meteorites, a large globe of the moon, and so much more. Griffith Observatory combines art, science, architecture, and beautiful views, and it's one of our very favorite places to visit in Los Angeles. Everybody, we're here in Los Angeles outside of Dodger Stadium. We're gonna go check out a game. Let's go! Located in Chavez Ravine, in the Elysian Park neighborhood of Los Angeles, Dodger Stadium has been the home of the Dodgers since it opened in 1962. It is currently the third oldest stadium in Major League Baseball and features mid-century modern architecture details such as the folded metal roofs, inverted canopies, and a 1960s pastel color palette. The color scheme of the seats, from the gold yellow of the field boxes to the sky blue of the top level, are designed to evoke the gradation of colors as the setting sun reflects on the ocean. The stadium's most unique features are the two hexagonal scoreboards in the outfield and the 10-story elevator shaft bearing the Dodgers logo that rises directly behind home plate. Dodger dog. It's made by Field Roast. It's a pretty basic dog with just a bun and the dog. And there's ketchup and mustard on the side, so we put some of that on there. It's actually really good. Really good flavor. You know, it just tastes like a hot dog. Pretty cool that they made it vegan. So got some ballpark nachos in a helmet. <laughs> it's nachos. It's great. It's gooey cheese. Jalapenos pickled. Chips are good. It's in a helmet.
top of the third, it's 5-3 Dodgers. They got uh, four in the first, jump out to an early lead, and Padres kind of put a couple over the fence and got a little closer. So, still plenty of time left. Let's see what happens. hotel for us was one night downtown Los Angeles under $150 and then preferably good reviews. This is the Hotel Kawada and it ticks most of those boxes. Let's have a tour. One thing I will say, it's a little bit snug. The pictures on the website were maybe a little bit deceptive, but you know, we went back and looked at them and yeah, okay, it looks a little small. But in person it's 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 very, it, it, it's snug, it's snug. It's got everything we need. It's got a full size bed, full bathroom. There's a refrigerator and a microwave and a nice flat screen TV. Let's check out the bathroom. Much like the room, bathroom, also pretty snug. Toilet, corner shower, sink. And then this interesting design choice, which looks like it used to be a window and now is a black board of some sort. Either way, the room meets all of our needs for a very reasonable price, so we're not complaining. We're gonna watch some TV, get some sleep, and we'll pick you up in the morning. So, we found this little hidden oasis in downtown Los Angeles. You have to go through the front of an apartment building, and it's kind of in a little courtyard in the middle. The coffee shop itself is really tiny, but it's super modern and cute. And they do have a few baked goods in addition to having coffee and matcha. The building has a living roof and there are plants everywhere. There's tons of seating. There's little boardwalk areas and grass and trees. It's really just cool. Let's give this drink a try. I got the cloud mocha and we'll see how it tastes. You can taste the dark chocolate. That cloud on top is creamy, a little bit sweet. The coffee flavor is not too overwhelming, but it's not super duper sweet. It's really, really delicious. I would definitely hang out here anytime. Uh. What's up? I don't know what I'm doing at all. The little button next to your thumb on your right hand. What? Got it? No. Dude. What's up? I'm wobbling like heck. This is some bullshit. <laughs> that is dangerous. I do not feel safe on this in any way. Just focus on staying straight. We're just going to Broadway and hanging right. Oh 
Oh my gosh. There's a break. That's terrible. <laughs> okay, I don't know which way it is from here. Holy f You're gonna lose your phone. Yeah, this is stupid. Located in the Homer Laughlin building downtown, Grand Central Market is the largest and oldest public market in Los Angeles. Made up of 40 stalls and seeing over 2 million visitors each year, the market opened in 1917, its location chosen for its proximity to Angel Slight Railway and the wealthy citizens who used it. In 2013, a new wave of vendors began transforming a century-old food arcade into a major culinary destination. All right, we're at Grand Central Market in downtown Los Angeles, and I got a chicken currywurst from Berlin Currywurst. And let's give it a try. Uh, this is something I've never had before. Uh, I love curry, and I love bratwurst, so how could we go wrong? Also, we got it on the, uh, he said the heat scale was one to four, saying that uh, four was ghost pepper, so I said, you know us, four. The curry's phenomenal. And the chicken sausage is really moist and flavorful. Wow. Not getting the spice. I don't know if the message didn't get to the kitchen, but it's just delicious. It's wonderful. It seems like a tomato based curry. There's definitely some spices on top. Looks like some turmeric, maybe some cumin. Oh yeah. I want to mention that the Grand Central Market is always packed and we are currently bouncing our food on a planter. So be prepared for that. There are about 20 tables outside and all of them were full and it's like like kill or be killed to get a table. So here we are on the planter. Be prepared for that. Behind me is a 120-year-old funicular railway that bills itself as the shortest in the country. It's been featured in so many movies that it's said that it should have its own side card. Built in 1901, it's carried over 100 million passengers, and it still delights tourists and locals alike. After a nearly 30-year hiatus, and having moved half a block south, Angel's Flight has been carrying passengers up Bunker Hill since reopening in 1996. As one car descends, the other ascends, carried by gravity. roughly 45 seconds to complete the 298-foot trip. We are here at the last bookstore in downtown Los Angeles. They call it a labyrinth, and it truly is. It is packed full of an overwhelming amount of books inside, along with comics, records, art, and more. And it is truly a must-see. It is the largest bookstore, both new and used, in California. Sprawling over 22,000 square feet in what was once a bank, the last bookstore contains over half a million titles. Space is full of book-related art displays, making for a fun, interactive experience. Our final stop brings us to a historic monument in the oldest part of Los Angeles. A block-long, brick-lined, pedestrian mall, Olvera Street was designed as a romanticized version of a Mexican marketplace, with small vendor stands lining its center, selling colorful piñatas, serapes, and oversized sombreros, among other items. 
while cynically derided by some as a sanitized fabrication of Latin American culture, merely to attract tourists, many more have embraced this space as a place for immigrants and their descendants to maintain ties to their Latin American heritage. These have cajita, which is a goat milk caramel, kind of like uh, dulce de leche, but with goat milk. Oh my god. Fitting that we end this trip in the place where the City of Angels began. At the end of Olvera Street, we find the central plaza of the original Pueblo of Los Angeles, founded in 1781. A plaque memorializes the names of the 44 Pobladores who founded the city. We hope you enjoyed coming along with us on our tourist weekend in Los Angeles. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and take a moment right now to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much and we'll see you in the next one.